All righty. Welcome in, everybody. Ivan here. It is 11 o'clock, give or take a moment or two, and I want to welcome everybody back in to our second class of the day, to the 11 o'clock class, to Green Initiatives for Barbershops and Hair Salons. We're going to talk about going green. We're going to talk about the power of going green. We're going to talk about the reasons for going green, and we're going to give you some ideas, creative ways that you can take your haircut business green in the interest of... Uh, all the reasons why green makes sense. It's all about the green, isn't it, guys? Okay, well, welcome in, welcome back. Zoom, we're here. Chat is open. Mics are muted. Uh, if you've got a comment or a question or you want to participate in the conversation, you are invited to unmute your mic. You can do that. Facebook, we're here. We've got Facebook looped in up on uh, the other device, and I want to just bring them up on the tablet. I kind of like to monitor the Facebook conversation because I've got the phone flipped by way of the tablet. And this will let us answer questions or interact with the Facebook community as well. So, we're good there. We're good here. You're good there. Um, big shout out, of course. You guys know we always start by mentioning our good friends at Barbicide. And all of the efforts Barbicide is putting into helping us get back to work, to helping us stay safe at work, and to helping us build in our clients the feeling of peace, the feeling of safe, the feeling of um, comfort with us and with our professional environments. Barbicide certification, COVID-19 certification, uh, safe environment certification, the back to work plan, the reopening recommendations document, that stuff is all out there for you. Uh, and I encourage you to take advantage of it, uh, to jump on those tools and use those tools for you, uh, and for your business community. So, uh, we're good on Facebook. Uh, looks like the zoom feed dropped. Uh, we know this happens from time to time. So we are going to take a moment and bring Zoom back up. I know how incredibly frustrating this is for everybody in the Zoom room. Last hour, let's be honest, let's give credit where credit is due. Last hour for our clipper cutting class, our skip guard tapering class, we never had a connectivity problem. We were rock solid the whole way through. Um, and that's why the payback today is we're having a little technical glitch a little early on. Okay, it is what it is. Let's just pop in on Facebook. We've got a comment on Facebook. Uh, Elizabeth, hello to you too. Let's acknowledge your comment. And uh, we'll be back at it. Patience, patience. Just pulling Zoom back up. All right, guys. You know, if I had the answer to the question, why does the Zoom feed drop from time to time? I'd have answers to lots of other questions, too. But I don't. But I know that when I do freeze up and go away, I come back. So we're back. Um, we were acknowledging our friends at Barbicide. We always thank them. Go to my link on my Instagram for direct access or go to Barbicide.com, Barbicide.com slash certification. All the information's there right on the Barbicide landing page. Yeah, it's a gift and a curse. You got it, guys. $100,000 hair cutter, one idea a day, every single day for 365 days to help you build and grow your business. By now, you guys are very familiar with the book. Many of you have purchased the book, paper, digital, or audio. I'm glad you have it. I hope you use it. For this particular program, we already talked about today, but I want, earlier today, I want to go to April 22nd. April 22nd, 112 days into the year with 253 days remaining in the year. Anybody know why I picked April 22nd when we're talking about green initiatives? That's right, Earth Day. April 22 is Earth Day. 
find a few ways to go green is the tip for the day. It's an example of what's going on in this book. Whether it's sales, marketing, education, training, recruiting, advertising, promotion, management, retailing, sanitation, you name it. It's all in here. Between 365 days plus a bonus week plus two additional monthly focus topics, nearly 400 ways to improve upon your business. And going green, today's tip, or the tip we talk about today, is just one of them. Um, Nikila offered up July 7. Let's really quickly go there and just take a quick look at July 7. July 7, day 188, 177 days remaining in the year. Worried about the tipping point. Collecting client data is the tip for the day for July 7. Collecting client data is an important part of marketing and managing your business. You can go old school and keep client records on paper with a pencil. You can transfer paper information to spreadsheets or upload it to a database. I use Constant Contact. Some people use MailChimp, things like that. Modern tools exist to collect client information and upload it to email marketing platforms and cloud-based databases. I'm also connected to Booksy. Booksy is my online appointment-based, app-based system that I use that captures all of my client data and lets me do things like push notifications and all kinds of other ways of connecting with my customers and my community. The more information you have, the better decisions you can make. And the more information you have on clients, the more connected you can be with them. Uh, name, email address, phone number, social media connections, uh, maybe birth dates, maybe mailing addresses, maybe the names and birth dates of their children. There's so many things you can do when you have powerful information to use to build and grow your business. So the importance of collecting client database and information uh, is the tip for the date that Nikila offered up. If anybody on Facebook wants to offer up a date, uh, we typically offer one more. Uh, Earth Day, correct guess, Brandon, you are right. Um, good to have you here. Okay, now, oh, Brandon offered up April 26. Let's take a look at April 26 for Brandon. That's our Facebook contribution date. It's very close. April 26, we talked about this yesterday in our program on product application. April 26, day 116 with 249 days remaining in the year. Use product on clients. We talked exactly about this yesterday. The best product knowledge is usable product knowledge. Gain through using products. What does it really do? How does it really work? You got to get dirty. You got to get your hands into it. And you got to get your head in it to really understand it. Same thing with our clients. If we are not using products on clients, why would they ever consider a suggestion or recommendation of a product? But if we are using them, very often clients will beg us to let them buy those products. Think about that. They will beg us to let them. Hey, can I buy that from you? Of course you can. All right, let's go green. Today's topic for the 11 o'clock class, green initiatives for barbershops and hair salons. And I've got some talking points from which we'll work through. First on the list is the question of why are we going green in the first place? Why is it important? And I think it's a legitimate question because we're a haircut business. We're a beauty industry business. We're a customer service business. Why is a conversation about going green important? I think there's a few reasons. I think reason number one why it's important is because it's our planet and we live here and we need to make it as livable as possible for us right now and for those that come after us. I have children. Uh, I'm waiting on grandchildren. I'm hoping that's going to happen. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I want to take them to the park and I want to take them fishing and I want to take them hiking and I want to do a ton of stuff outside to enjoy the world in which we live. And I want everybody else and their children and their grandchildren and the children that come after that to be able to enjoy a lot of these good things. So green is good just for green's sake. For the, in the interest of protecting the planet, you know, uh, there are those that will argue that humans, like animals and other organisms, 
really have little ability to impact the long-term health of the planet. And I think if you want to get, I, I don't even want to get into a big discussion about things like global warming. I think that's more than we want to try to tackle right here and right now. And I'm not going to enter into a debate about the reality of global warming. But I will enter into the debate about having clean, fresh water in your community, um, picking up garbage alongside a roadside, um, you know, using less throwawayable items that are filling up landfills and things like that. Things that are very immediate, very direct, and very much have real contact with us every single day. Um, yeah, let's talk about the whole planet, but let's bring it right down to us and our homes and our families and the things we engage with and experience every day. Let's also acknowledge green's good for business. Um, you have clients for whom green initiatives are very, very important. You have clients that don't care about green initiatives, but you have clients that do. The clients that don't care won't care that you're doing green things, but the clients that do care will really care about the fact that you're doing green things. So even if you don't have uh, a huge base of customers concerned with green, it can't be bad. It can't hurt your business to be involved in green initiatives. You know, I have seen situations in which salons that are more green oriented or green focused are even charging more because their expenses are higher because not everything that you do green related, and we'll see this in our list, is going to be free. Sometimes green costs you a little more, and sometimes that little more is absolutely worth it. And for clients that are hyper-focused on green initiatives, the fact that things are more expensive because they're green is not a problem for them. You know, I have seen many times in some toy stores, um, especially some of the toy stores in the airports and things like that when I was traveling, um, a brand of toys that are made from 100% post-consumer recycled plastic. And those toys are also packed in 100% post-consumer packaging manufactured from recycled materials. And these are fun toys and these are nice toys and, and that's all well and good. But one of the things that is very specifically evident with those toys is the fact that those toys cost more money. They are always more expensive than the same toy not made from recycled materials and not packaged in recycled packaging. And I'm always struck by the fact that when you talk to the store owners, toy store owners about these things, they will tell you they don't have any trouble selling them. And they will tell you they don't have any problem with customers paying the premium associated with these recycled goods these toys made from recycled materials, that the clients that do buy them are happy to buy them. They're happy to pay a little bit more. You know, you're buying little Billy uh, a, a truck or you're buying him a, 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 a whatever. I don't know. Uh, one of the ones I remember seeing was a like a beach pail and shovel, a plastic pail and shovel made from recycled goods. And I think that parent or that grandparent or that gift buyer is sending a message. Not only the I love you and I want to buy you a toy message, but also the message of I want to set an example by supporting things that are supporting you and your future. So I think green for green's sake is important. Green for client's sake has legitimacy and green for business. It's good for your business to be um, high profile, I think, in these categories and these initiatives. And it's good for your community. I think any community, and there are parts of our country that are more focused on green initiatives. I think normally when we think about green things, we think about places like the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, Oregon, Washington, maybe California as being greener places. I think we also think about things like along the Gulf Coast, uh, maybe Florida, maybe some of the Carolinas as being green focused. I think we also think about places in the heartland like Colorado, uh, Idaho, Montana, uh, big wide open spaces out there, the Dakotas, uh, where people go to enjoy, you know, the Grand Canyon. Um, people go to enjoy um, Utah. 
uh, the beauty of this country and the outdoors and things like that. And those are communities that tend to have a green focus. I also think sometimes you find a green focus in urban communities and urban centers. Um, Chicago has always been very aggressive with what they used to call their blue bag recycling program. Living in the Chicago suburbs, um, I think we got involved in uh, community-based recycling before we had curbside bins. We had local drop-off points where you could take your milk cartons. I remember one not far from my parents um, that had sorting glass where you'd put your green glass, your clear glass, your brown glass in these different bins. And as kids, we would load, the, and my parents weren't excessively green focused, but they were aware and they were engaged and involved. Um, and we as kids would go in the car to the recycling drop-off center that predates uh, curbside. And I know of communities that still have community drop-off recycling points where people take things. Uh, so it's really about your community. Urban centers can be very aggressive with uh, some of these recycling opportunities because, quite frankly, our larger urban centers are the places where, in many cases, we are producing significantly greater quantities of recyclable materials uh, and things like that. Um, while we're on that community concept, let's talk about one of my pet projects. Those of you that follow me on social media, those of you that listen to and pay attention to some of the things I do that are not about cutting hair, know that I am real big on roadside garbage pickup. I love roadside garbage pickup. During the early stages of coronavirus lockdown, uh, and I still do this, I'm just waiting for the rain to dry up to get back out there. I think as of today, I have picked up, I think, 41... 42 gallon garbage bags off the side of the roads in my community in the last eight weeks. I did a lot of garbage pickup when the weather was clear and cold, but nice. Um, I would park my truck, walk down the side of the road, load up bags, put them in my truck, and take them to my village's um, municipal garbage collection area to dump them out. That's just me doing my thing. But I want to tell you, these are high visibility initiatives that can be very, very valuable within your community. Maybe your barbershop or hair salon adopts a stretch of roadway. And here in Illinois, where I live, we have programs to adopt stretches of roadway in this way, where you can sign up with the state to have a sign put up that says, this piece of road belongs to Mike's Barbershop and we pick up the garbage. That's great. You can do that if you want. But the area where I collect garbage in my neighborhood doesn't have a sign with my name on it. And I don't do anything to advertise that I'm doing it. I share it on social media, not to brag or show off that I'm out picking up garbage. I share it on social media to inspire others to do the same and to encourage others to do the same. I just, you know, I, it's impossible for me to understand how somebody can throw a pop bottle, a water bottle, uh, or a candy wrapper, or a pack of cigarettes, an empty pack of cigarettes, out the window of a moving vehicle. Um, I, I just can't get my head around it. I, I, I don't understand. But it happens, and it is what it is. And if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. I don't think I can drive by a stretch of roadway looking at that garbage and not want to get out and do this. I keep gloves and bags in my truck. But that's enough about me and what I do. It's more important to recognize that these are things you can do within your community in a very high profile way. So let's talk about the specifics of green initiatives within your barbershop or hair salon. Number one, try to go paperless if possible. I think there are a lot, there's paper in our businesses and I think we can get rid of some of this paper. I think we can get rid of uh, paper schedules. We can use apps and Excel spreadsheets to do things like that. I think we can get rid of bags used for product. I think we can put the product on the counter and say, here you go. And very seldom is a customer going to say, do you have a bag for that? Customers have backpacks and purses and things. They'll throw those things in there. Um, so we can get rid of paper that way. We can get rid of paper appointment books today. Everybody is moving to online and digital appointment booking. Um, the apps, I use Booksy. Everybody knows I'm part of Booksy. Um, the Booksy app to be used to uh, keep track of appointments is a very easy way to eliminate a bunch of paper. 
I'm still a business card guy. I still love, and everybody knows, when it comes to building business, I'm all about business cards, and they're paper. People keep them. Some people throw them away. They can be recycled. Um, but you know, there are digital options for business cards now. There are digital business cards where phones can be uh, held near each other or tapped or swiped or QR code based uh, business cards to eliminate that. One of my favorite electronic business card ideas, and I have this for myself at my shop, I have a little picture frame. It's about that big. And it's a picture frame and it sits on my desk. And it's a picture frame and it looks like, what's in it looks like a business card. It's got my name and my phone number and my email address, my website, and the name of the shop and the shop phone number and all the information on it like a big framed business card. And you know what I do with that? I tell people, hey, I want you to have my card. And I hold it up, I usually smile, and I hold it up and I say, take a picture. And people, they get their phone out Everyone always everywhere has a camera with them now. And they take a picture of my picture frame, my little framed card, and they keep it. Some of them I know have saved it as my face in their phone book. As my, what do you call it, my icon, my image, whatever you call it. Uh, my profile image in their phone book. So now not only is my picture a picture of me, but it's a picture of my business card. And they've got it. So that's another example of how we can go paperless. Look around your shop, look for every single thing you have on paper, and ask yourself, can I eliminate it? You know, for those of us that take credit cards, the credit terminals now, you know, the touchpad, card swipe, credit card terminal things that so many of us are using, those have a button where you can choose an email or a paper receipt. Encourage people to get that email receipt. Double whammy collecting client information, not only do you not use a paper receipt, but now you capture their email address. Double benefit. Next on the list is recycling. Let's talk about recycling in a barber shop or hair salon. There are several opportunities for recycling. We are using products in bottles and plastic jars and pucks. I love the idea of putting a curbside bin in your waiting area. Putting a curbside recycling bin in your waiting area. You can buy one at a retail store if your village doesn't give them out. If you need an extra one, you can probably order one from the village. Now, it's important to remember that a lot of cities and towns like where I live, curbside recycling is for residents only. We don't have curbside recycling for commercial businesses. Imagine a tavern with a number of bottles of beer they'd be putting out at the curb like that. It doesn't work. Most of those guys do their recycling different ways. But a recycling bin in the waiting room can be powerful in a lot of ways. Number one, as we use packaging in the shop, when it's empty, we will throw it in the recycling bin. This is what I did in my shop years ago. Number two, we will encourage clients to use the recycling bin. If somebody walks in drinking a bottle of water or soda, when it's done, throw it in the bin. I promise you, if you have a garbage bag and a recycling bin, a garbage can and a recycling bin next to each other in your waiting area, very few customers will put the water bottle in the garbage. If it is there, if it is convenient, if they can do it, if they don't have to walk somewhere else, they're gonna do the right thing. I believe and I have faith that people will do the right thing. So have that recycling bin out front. Just by putting the recycling bin in the front lobby waiting room area of your shop, you're sending a message about the business's attitude towards recycling. It's a way of putting your green behavior right up front for everybody to see, to know that you're involved in it. So I think that can be important as well. And almost all of our hair care product packaging is in fact recyclable. While we're on that subject of recycling and while we're on the subject of product packaging, I think there's also an opportunity here to cut down on our packaging. Larger sizes. If you're using back bar, if you're using a gel on the back bar, if you've got an eight ounce bottle on every station, that's eight plastic bottles for eight stations. 
But if you've got a 32 ounce bottle with a pump in an area centrally available to everyone, anybody can walk over, take a shot out of that pump. Now you've got one bottle that will go in the bin when you're done. So bulk sizes do make sense. There's another initiative out there that I've seen from some manufacturers, and that is refills done in what they call flex packaging. So you've got a large bottle of shampoo on the back bar that you use to shampoo your customers. And when it's empty, instead of replacing that bottle with a bottle, many manufacturers sell like a pouch, a pouch pack that you can unscrew and squeeze and dump into that same bottle. I had this back in my shop in the day from one of my manufacturers, and I seriously think I had a plastic bottle of shampoo on my back bar, and that bottle had to be five years old. Because I just, and this was a while ago when these were new initiatives, we just kept refilling that bottle from a flex pouch. And the flex pouch, when it was empty, rolled up nice and flat, it was very, very small. If it got landfilled, it took up very little space, but if it didn't, it went in the recycling bin. It got recycled and it got reused. So bulk sizes and flex packs are really great ideas. There's also some better thought in products out there. There are products that are made in packaging specifically designed to be recycled. Um, there's a brand that I have been exposed to in the past that had bottles that were actually biodegradable. They were a material that when buried in a landfill very rapidly compared to this, which will be around for, I don't know how many thousand years, uh, if it didn't go into the recycling bin. Um, these were products specifically designed to biodegrade. And there was actually a product some of you may be familiar with, I don't remember the brand name of it, but it was a hair care product brand that was in a package that was biodegradable, that also contained plant seeds molded into the bottom of the bottle. And the idea was, you would use their shampoo, and when you're done, you would throw the bottle, or you'd bury the bottle. You'd take it out and you'd bury it. And when you buried that bottle, number one, it would biodegrade, and number two, the seeds would then create a plant or a tree or something like that. Now, this falls in the category of choosing the products with which you work that have stronger environmental connectivity or stronger environmental initiatives. We know some brands out there that have a green pitch or a green angle to them. Again, to appeal to customers for whom that is valuable or important. But there are products out there that contain um, lower levels of detergents, so they're more environmentally friendly as they enter the water stream. There are products out there in, as we said, recyclable packaging. Um, there are better choices, lower levels of chemicals and things like that. So I think that makes sense. I think we also get into the green conversation when we talk about our water. Whether it is um, well water that we're using or whether we're using treated city water, um, whether we're filtering our wastewater to remove contamination from it before it's sent back out into the water system, if we can filter out any kind of toxins or any kind of negative components, especially those of us that are using a lot of hair color and a lot of bleach and that are rinsing a lot of chemicals into our drains and into our systems. I know that there are some rules in some places that are a little more environmentally focused that deal with uh, reducing the contamination that we put out into the water stream. Just like factories and other industrial employers and businesses and industrial manufacturers need to be aware of some of those types of thoughts and concepts and initiatives. Thinking a little bit about the water uh, that we're creating as a byproduct of our business. Up next on the list is refills. And this is something that we did in my shop. And back in the day, I gotta tell you, my whole focus was not on, hey, let's be as green as we possibly can be. But I did think these things were important. I had stickers on my bottles that offered a discount for a refill. So what I had done was, for all of the popular hair care products that I sold, I had purchased gallons, big gallons with pumps. And I had them in the back. And if you brought in your shampoo, or your gel, or your conditioner, if you brought the empty back, and let's face it, this takes a little bit of work on the part of the client. Clients are only gonna do this if it's important to them, but clients will also do this 
if there's something in it for them. You know, selling the WIFM, W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? That's always what we ask ourselves as it comes to um, sales initiatives and marketing initiatives. What's in it for that end user consumer? So our sticker said, bring this empty back for a refill, save 10%. So you would bring in your bottle of shampoo, I would take it in back and I would open it up, pump, 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 fill it up, take it up front, and if it was an $8 bottle of shampoo, you paid $7.20 for the refill. You got rewarded. So I wasn't putting another plastic bottle out into the universe. They were getting more shampoo, they were saving money, and I was getting them to buy their next shampoo from me. So this is an example of win, 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 win. The environment wins, the customer wins, I win, everybody wins. <clears throat> Excuse me, you win. Next on the list, let's talk about sweeping. We sweep the floor. We cut a lot of hair. We put a lot of hair on the floor. We sweep it all up. What are you doing with the sweepings? It's a fun little recycling conversation. You've been in the business a little bit. Anybody ever come in and ask you for hair? Hey, can I get a bag of hair? I get that all the time. And I tell people all the time, you can have as much as you want. When we sweep, it's actually interesting. In the barber shop where I'm at now, we sweep all the hair off the cutting room floor into a pile in the back room. And it sits in the pile in the back room near the garbage can. And only about a couple of times a day do we actually sweep up the pile and put it in the can. And one of the reasons for that is people want that hair sometimes. What do they do with it? There's a few things you can do with it. You gotta remember, in a barber shop, most of that hair hasn't been washed. So it's got natural human oils on it, and it doesn't, it, and it smells like people. One of the most common uses for hair sweepings from a barber shop is if you want to control animals on your property. Where I live, we have a lot of deer, and uh, we, we're not too far from a lot of open land, uh, a lot of, uh, forest preserve, a lot of woods, and a lot of deer. And a lot of people don't want the deer in their yards eating their gardens, um, eating their vegetables, eating their flowers. Deer love to eat flowers. Um, if you, did you know, if you sprinkle hair, human hair, along your property line, deer won't cross. Because deer lead with their nose. And as soon as they smell that, they turn away. It's a great way to keep deer off your property. If you have a vegetable garden, um, hair does not biodegrade really well, but it'll keep animals, it'll keep the rabbits out of your vegetable garden, it'll keep the raccoons out of your vegetable garden, it'll keep a lot of these animals out of your vegetable garden. You can use those sweepings for that. And for those of you in more coastal communities, many of you may have found that um, oil spills there are companies that use human hair when bagged in um, uh, like mesh bags and things is really, really great. Hair absorbs oil. Human hair is really, really great for using for um, sucking up oil spills, environmental disasters, uh, environmental tragedies, and some of those situations. So there's lots of places out there that have collected up hair to use for that. So there's an opportunity there to put all that hair we cut to good use in a uh, hair program for recycling some of that hair. And the last thing I have, uh, uh, and you can donate hair too. You know, somebody made the comment here. You can donate hair. There are charities that accept donations of hair more than 12 inches. Um, uh, uh, wigs for kids and, and children with hair loss is another great one. Um, I will say, though, I'm not a fan of those programs. And it's not related to recycling, but I will share, I do not believe in supporting the kids' wig hair charities through hair donation. And I want to be very clear about what I believe. I believe in supporting those charities. I believe those are good charities. I believe you should donate to those charities, but I don't believe you should donate hair. I believe you should donate money because while you're waiting for your hair to be long enough to donate, 
Sick kids need wigs. And most of the time, the hair that you donate is no good. They don't want hair that is color treated. They don't want hair that is severely badly damaged. They don't want hair that is not clean. And I know because for years I have done some of those haircut collections and I have participated in some of those things. A lot of the hair that they get has to be thrown away. And a lot of the hair, some of the hair that they get can be sold for cash. And a very small amount of the hair that they actually get can be used for kids for wigs. And I believe that if you really want to support those kids, cancer, leukemia, other reasons, uh, kids hair loss charities, the best thing you can do is write them a check and put the check in the mail today, immediately, now, quickly. Write them a check, get that money off to them quickly, and then go out and buy yourself a haircut rather than waiting till you have 12 inches to cut. That's just my take on those kids' charities. I think they'd rather have your money and they'd rather have your money now than waiting for your hair to be long. Now, one argument I've had when I've shared that opinion that I've heard from people is one of the benefits of doing that haircut donation for charity is that no one does that haircut donation for charity without social impact without sharing it, without getting pictures, without blogging it, without tweeting it, Instagramming it, Facebooking it, blah, 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 blah. And the argument is that when you do that, you create an incredible amount of awareness for the need and the charity. Do I agree with that? 1,000%. I totally agree with that. So the only upside associated with the giving of the hair to the charity is the visibility for the charity, the exposure for the charity, the awareness for the charity that they get that is so vital and so valuable to them. But I still stand by the notion, you can also tell people about it when you write a check. So I think you can get that social bump uh, more than one way. Last on my list of green initiatives is the question of laundry. The question of paper or cloth on laundry. And I think you guys might be surprised to learn of what is the uh, best practice in this area. Do we use cloth towels and do we launder them or do we use paper goods and throw them away? And the answer to that question is, if we are interested in being as admire, environmentally friendly as we possibly can, as good for the environment as we possibly can, the answer is paper disposables. Paper disposables. Not plastic line disposables, but things like uh, the salon towels, the wubby towels, the paper neck strips, paper. Here's why. Linen laundry requires detergents. Linen laundry requires energy. Linen laundry is a contamination or is dirty to begin with. Linen laundry is actually more negatively environmentally impactful in the context of a hair salon than our paper goods. You're better off buying paper, using paper, and throwing paper away. The paper that we use in our industry biodegrades very, very quickly. It goes away very, very quickly. It is cheap. Um, it has minimal environmental impact. And when you choose paper, unbleached paper obviously reduces the chemicals used in paper production. Uh, that can be helpful. Um, but using paper, keep in mind a lot of the paper companies, because they rely on paper for their business, they grow trees, they plant trees, they're very environmentally involved. I'm not paid by a paper company. I'm not sponsored by a paper company in any way, but I want to tell you the paper companies generally are very environmentally conscious. They're very, very good about the things that they do. The paper companies come from places like the Pacific Northwest or Georgia Pacific down in Georgia or the Wisconsin, Northern Wisconsin is loaded with trees. Northern Wisconsin is loaded with people that really care about the environment. And Northern Wisconsin is loaded with paper companies. And these paper companies are very active in doing good things 
to support and maintain the environments in which they do business. So all of that adds up to somewhat counterintuitively, somewhat contrary to what you might think, it is much better in our industry to use paper disposables than it is to use laundered linen for taking care of our customers and growing our business. All right, guys, that's what I have on my green agenda. I want to open it up for questions about green initiatives for your business. Um, I, I think it goes without saying, I didn't really spend any time here talking about um, using social media to promote your green activities and the value associated with that. I think that's a given. I hope everybody understands. If you do green, talk green. Questions here on Zoom, questions on Facebook. Let me see if we got anything uh, new from the folks in Facebook land by way of some contribution. Um, hi from New Mexico. Eugene Oregon's checking in. Good to see you guys there. All right. Anybody else on Zoom with questions or comments as it relates to the world of green? Because if not, we're going to wrap a little bit early. We're going to be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. On Thursday's schedule, we have Clipper Clinic, Episode 3. That's been a fun class. I've got more clippers down here to be shared, to be explored, to be looked at, and to be learned about. We're going to go to Clipper Clinic. And um, 11 o'clock tomorrow is making the most of a first-time client. There's a reason why this subject is very, very relevant right now. There's a reason why it's a very important conversation. We're going to get into it tomorrow at 11. And then Friday, we have condensed cutting at 9 o'clock and tracking and statistics at 11. I'm also working on next week's schedule. So if you have suggestions, ideas, contributions for topics or subjects that you wish to talk about or that you wish to see us address... I invite you to bring them to me. Hit me with a DM. And by the way, all of these classes can be watched on replay for the rest of the day. And then they go into my Patreon. They go into my um, online uh, academy where you can sign up and you can continue to watch these over and over again. Wednesday night is meeting night. We've got a live meeting on Wednesday. You guys are all invited to join. This week it's an open meeting. It is usually exclusively for my online community. But we're updating the agenda. We're updating the content. And I want people to come in and try that support meeting. If you want to be a $100,000 hair cutter, if you want to build and grow your business, that meeting is all about supporting that community in that way. Uh, do you ever you give the hair away? Yeah, we don't charge for the hair. Anybody wants hair clippings, it's free. Bring your own bag. B-Y-O-B. Bring your own bag. People come in with a brown paper grocery bag and load it up and take away the hair. It's yours. Um, product class. We'll be doing more product classes coming up. That's another request we've had. So we will definitely attempt to provide that as support for folks that want to see that again. And David, that's still available for replay uh, if you're interested on the Patreon site, uh, you're invited to go there and join up and sign up there as well. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy the rest of your time. And we'll come back and we'll do more of this again right here on Zoom and right here on Facebook. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.